Thank you. Wow. It's uh, great to be here. And uh, I must say, this is probably one of the largest audiences I've uh, presented for. Um, I've been on a road show in Denmark for about five different occasions uh, for the last year, telling the story. And the target group, in particular, is um, heads of organizations uh, that decide on organization structure. It's for heads of analytics to consider how teams can be organized, and it's also for analysts um, to try to rethink, maybe pick up a few tips on how to make, how to make a bigger difference at the end of the day. Um, quick introduction about myself, Robert Johnson. I moved to Denmark quite at a young age, when I was 25. I've been there for 26 years, and more than half my life now has been in Denmark. And I started as a TV data analyst uh, in New York, where my job was to go through the Nielsen rating books and uh, using a ruler and losing my eyesight and finding all of the numbers that the TV stations and the ratings and the shares and building stories for salespeople to allow them to sell advertising on the, on the stations. And I'd like to think that I had a rather unique approach in that um, in the sense that the management at the time said that there was a one-week window of, of, that you had to deliver the insights and predictions from the time the rating books were published. Um, and I took that one-week window and I reduced it to less than 24 hours in order to publish those sales pieces. And I got a lot of praise for that and recognition. And that is actually how I ended up getting to Denmark as a consultant to help the, the Danish and Scandinavian broadcasting industry learn how to use TV ratings. So anyway, a passionate data nerd starting in the TV branch and moving over into web analytics where I am today. So that's um, the transition. And, and on a private end, um, I'm married. and I've been married for 25 years. My wife would kill me since I just hesitated. Um, I have two grown sons. Uh, and I enjoy spearfishing and biking, a lot of biking, especially out in the mountains. Now, my story. Story is about organizational change and an agile mindset, um, about how to um, instill a, an agile methodology. Is there anyone here, can I see a sh share of hands that have an agile organization or work in an agile organization? Okay, that's quite a few. I'm, I'm going to set up, uh, today you'll see the example of what I refer to as agile, because I think that word is used very often. Um, agile meaning quick, and we're agile, but we'll see. And it's also applied to uh, IT, but let's see how far in the organization that agile goes. So uh, as a mission within the analytics team, we had, uh, of course, a lot of insight to sell. Um, but uh, nobody was buying in the beginning. Uh, we were pushing the traditional sense of creating reports, uh, sending them out on emails, and hoping that people would open them and consume them. We really had little feedback. Um, that is the traditional sense of analytics. And we wanted to create a pull scenario. That was our dream and how to get there. And, well, the reality is, inside of an organization, they've become so complex, especially in pyramidical organizations, there are... Uh, yeah, the interpersonal relationships that exist, there's a lot of hindrances that can come up that pr can prevent an analyst from making a difference or someone consuming a report. And I started digging into organizational uh, structures and, and the history of it. And I'm not going to go into detail about this, but I'll, I'll leave you some links in the end of the presentation. Fantastic uh, YouTube video, the low uh, cultural model, to see the evolution of how Companies, organizations have changed and starting from the beginning of uh, when a mafia type of driven organization which ran by the basis of fear all the way up to the, the most modern view of organizational structure today where, where the driving forces are a higher sense of purpose in individuals. And maybe your company or your organization is somewhere in between. But agile comes is a little tiny, agile and lean are just small components um, within what they would call the fourth wave, if you refer to this Lalo 
cultural model. I'll leave that to you. So, you see, went through a massive organizational change and we set the agenda three years ago and started working on the strategy, how we were going to move from hierarchy, filled with bureaucracy, top down, and how we were going to build a holocratic organization. And that was a radical change, uh, a change that meant that the leaders and managers had to give up their power and authority. They no longer um, were the ones taking the decisions. The decisions in a holocratic organization are made by the experts, and those are the people on the ground who work every day. They are the... In a, in a digital production sense, it would be the architects, it would be the user experience, the JX, the journey experts, it would be the f uh, editorial managers. Each of them have a piece of the puzzle and understand their unique view of what, how to make a difference in developing that product. And it's not the product manager or commercial manager or the CEO who has a vision for a product. It's the people who work hands-on with that product every day. Those are the experts. So we went through this change, um, designed it in a blueprint, brought in McKinsey. McKinsey came in full force that we had. Um, I was in the first wave where there was a POC of 10 uh, people who developed one product using agile methodology. When that T POC was over, we scaled it up to 160 people working agile from one squad or agile squad, we went to 14 squads overnight. And we had five people from McKinsey full-time helping us through this transition and helping get us into that mindset. The story of agile, they say, started with a chicken and a pig. And um, you can read for yourself, but uh, as the chicken says out, uh, as the chicken comes, hey, pig, hey, shouldn't we open up a restaurant together? Pig says, yeah, what would we call it? We call it, hey, how about ham and eggs? And the pig says, nah, I don't think so. Um, you'd be involved, but I'd be committed. And that, that, they say, is how Agile started. It was about realizing that the people on the ground are the ones committed. And the managers, they can have a seagull management philosophy, and then they dump a set of requests, and then they fly away. Um, so the people on the ground, that's, that's really about making the decisions every day. So in the structure in UC, um, we developed uh, what we call a tribe, which is a holistic group of people uh, devoted to a particular service, um, uh, a, a combination of services. And an example, we'll say we'll have squads, uh, sales squads, we'll have service squads, there can be marketing squads, and even a squad for the login team, a team of um, just people who are working on the login options on the website. And then, of course, um, horizontally, uh, there's different members. You would have a product owner. We had editorial managers, journey experts, user experience, front-end, back-end developers. So what Analytics did is we offered a support for not only each of the verticals, uh, a sales devoted analytics team, a service devoted team, a marketing devoted team, um, but we also devoted expertise into understanding the chapters, and those are the horizontal. So, what does a journey expert do? What does a user experience do? And that was the analyst challenge to get to know. The key drivers um, about that, that I feel that, that, that turn pushing data into pulling insight. Um, one was about that the, the squad has end-to-end uh, -end responsibility, very important, that people are accountable, um, and that the squads have multifunctionality, so that uh, a diverse set of roles and competencies, and that um, Lastly, where, whenever possible, that everything is all carried out together, all work is carried out by the squad, that they, they don't need to go and borrow resources from other departments. They all sit together in one group every day. There's a total of 12 principles of Agile. You can read up about that another time. I won't go into details. But then, so the most important starting point, I felt, with the analytics team, as we went through this transformation to get the analytics team 
off into an agile transformation was to give them a sense of purpose. Why do we exist? And in our case, it was about instilling a data-driven culture. That was written on the wall, it was written on the door. That is, everyone knew every day, it, the analysts, this is why we come to work. We are here to build a data-driven culture. And with that purpose, we then established together um, a set of success criteria um, among all that all of the members of the tribe will become aware of what data exists and the KPIs that are available to choose that they can track and that they can get insights upon, that we will develop tools to enable people to take decisions and not reports, that every analyst made themselves known. So across the entire tribe of 160 people, every single person had to know, who do I go to when I need this? So that was a, an awareness building of the analysts. And we've heard this a lot, I'm sure, and you'll hear it more throughout the day. We are stopping building rocket ships, and we are going to have a minimum viable product approach. And of course, using the KISS sim principle, keep it stupidly simple, and interactive. And I'll come back on that interactive, double click on that a little later. And lastly, about a mindset of defining value in relation to time. Because a deep dive may have enormous value um, if people could extract all of the insights that was in that deep dive. But what value can be made in the shortest amount of time and ask your stakeholders about how important time is to them. So uh, we went on this competency transformation, and uh, I had to go and recruit, and of course, either looking for the natural born digital natives or uh, teaching old dogs new tricks, and actually found a combination of both. And here's a couple ingredients that we found really helpful. Um, one, uh, the team consisted of people with T-shaped, we, we built up T-shaped competencies, um, a very, from the broad sense of the T, uh, a high amount of commercial understanding, um, understanding the BI systems, being aware of the data that exists, and on the vertical side of the T, uh, especially for digital, they had to have sales and service, web analytics competencies, deep insight on CO, tracking, and IT uh, and, and data layer, and tag management. The second ingredient was integration with stakeholders. And it's about getting the analysts out of their element and understanding how the stakeholders worked. So agile seating was the first principle. And to understand the needs, sit with your stakeholders. Um, immersion in problem solving. So understanding what problems, what decisions do the stakeholders need to make each day. Sharing in the KPI success of the stakeholders and sharing and comparing solutions across other analysts. Yeah? Third ingredient was uh, transforming static reporting into interactive learning. Um, I hope there's no one that disagrees, but interactivity fosters enga that engagement fosters higher learning rates. So moving standard reports, which beg why, why, why all the time, into enabling stakeholders to find answers and get to that why themselves. So reports or dashboards that are interactive, that the that the stakeholders have been a part of building or designing, and that can lead to the why. The last ingredient was 24-7 um, access to those insights across multiple devices. And, of course, uh, providing the security um, uh, fr from a company point of view that the data would not leave uh, if an employee left the company. So we made those insights an interactive engagement tools available on PC, on mobile, on tabs, on screens, on, and reminders on posters. So spreading the word across the organization about how analytics was structured, what our mission was, our purpose, and then having, them, having insights available on a 24-7 basis. I'll go in now a little bit about the structure. Uh, this is in reference to a digital analytics team um, and a little bit about the learnings that we had 
uh, in the structure. So we had three main uh, components of a digital analytics team, two-site analytics, on-site analytics, and tracking. Um, we'll start with tracking. Uh, tracking was all, uh, is all about enabling the ability to capture data. Um, my tracking architect, uh, especially uh, with the uh, Adobe tracking, is, is one of my most protective uh, members of the team. Um, they're so hard to come by. Uh, when the, you find a gifted one, hold on with both hands. Um, it, it, it's not a commonly known, it, it takes quite a passion to come into the world of web tracking, and there's not many good people out there. A lot of the, some of the lessons that I learned along tracking, that if it's not tracked, of course, you won't know. And what you don't know, you can't manage. And of course, sadly, tracking is one of those things that's an afterthought when in product development. Um, and it still happens every day as much as you try to promote the awareness that people say, I forgot to give you the brief that I need tracking on this new web page. Um, I see some nod of heads, you have seen that before. Um, and then, of course, we, uh, we are planning a tracking cons consultation with every single um, project is necessary. Um, uh, really following best practice briefing processes between um, it, it needs to go instead of direct to an architect, uh, a stakeholder uh, needs to come to an analyst to discuss what they want to know, and the analyst then should go to the tracking architect to be able to, uh, in a more professional sense, um, describe what it is that needs to be tracked, because the analyst is the best one equipped to be able to understand what KPIs does the stakeholder need to take the decisions. Um, and the best way that I can uh, advise uh, in terms of, uh, as a stakeholder, giving a brief is put it into a user story. Um, what do you want to do with the information? What, what experience do you want to have? What decisions do you want to be able to take? Those are the examples of user stories. Um, the second area is two-site analytics. Two-site analytics um, would best be, uh, is relevant for um, within the marketing departments and traffic optimization. And some of the lessons learned there, um, marketing, they need structure. And they have, they, it often, uh, with, within the creative environment, structure is lacking. It is uh, a bit chaotic. And they need to understand that um, without, in advance, defining your tags, um, understanding what are the vehicles that are bringing traffic into the site, whether it's video or display or an affiliate or, uh, or, or SEM, that it needs to be tagged up properly, including that creative name, that creative variant uh, that has been utilized. So that, that, that structure is desperately needed. Um, understanding also the different roles, a huge confusion comes up in, in organizations about what numbers do I trust? Do I trust the Adobe numbers, the Google uh, AdWords numbers, uh, AdForm numbers? All of them are saying basically the same thing in terms of the amount of traffic or the amount of sales that came in. And you typically have those arguments between marketing and business about which system do we trust? And it's very important to establish that hierarchy. What is the purpose of each system? And what decisions do we take from each system? And of course, um, another lesson learned is take down the silos between IT and marketing from that. And then the on-site analytics among the, um, the key lessons here is, is to have a diverse team, complementary in skills. Um, I've talked about the old dog and new tricks. Um, we, taking a, someone who's skilled in BI and teach them web analytics, and at the same time, challenge your web analysts to also to learn advanced analytics from, from BI. Uh, the collaboration with BI is, is tremendously important, um, improving value, and, and then also the time to deliver that insight. Um, and then uh, lastly, it was about building s uh, stakeholder self-competency and less reports. How can you enable a stakeholder to take a better decision? Turning a stakeholder into an extra analyst then takes that bottleneck out of the analytics department. And as they say, you give a man a fish and he'll eat for a day, but if you teach him to fish, he can eat for a lifetime. And that's how our philosophy on how we treated our stakeholders. 
I'm going to wrap up now with just uh, about was this transition successful? Two years now of operating under this agile analytics model. So it was very important to me to get feedback. Um, and then, how, uh, so for me standing here today, I'd, I'd be a hypocrite to say that, oh, it, it was successful. Um, but um, if I didn't have some type of measurement in place to define that, so I'm going to share what, what I've done in terms of the measurement. Um, three most important things to measure. Are your analysts happy? How is the employee satisfaction? Um, are they satisfied with their job? And you know it as a leader uh, within your one-to-ones. Uh, you'll know it in your yearly ESAT surveys. And then the smiles on their face, day in, day out. Are they more on than off? Next, happy stakeholders. Who are the ones that are receiving the insights from the analysts? And do they, does an analyst understand their needs? Are you measuring what a stakeholder feels in terms of the most important attributes? Is it time to get that insight, or is it a deep dive? So measuring response time, asking in surveys, uh, say, are we helping you make decisions? And then lastly, uh, among sending out your survey, you get a lot of insight from how many people actually respond to that survey. So looking at the stakeholder response rate and striving, how can we improve? And some of the measures I had, these are the latest measures after two surveys um, within, um, within 2018. Um, uh, we're up and there's definitely room for improvement, um, especially in the area of the stakeholder response rate. But coming from uh, what we had 12 responses in the first survey, um, up to 36 responses. Again, we're now up to 200 people within the tribe, and it's a great area that can be improved. Yeah, so summing it up, just use little pictograms. I hope you got a few uh, takeouts here. Um, moving hierarchy into holacracy, uh, the chicken and the pig. I think those are really, really important attributes that led to an agile analytics and taking decisions faster. Um, uh, establishing purpose. Uh, why do analysts exist? Um, having the success criteria clear. And then uh, teaching old dogs new tricks and getting analysts out of their element and promoting interactive learning. And at the end of the day, the most important elements are your analysts. Most important elements are, are your analysts happy and are the stakeholders happy? That's it. Thank you very much. Thank you, Robert.